Olá, queridos irmãos e irmãs. Bem-vindos a mais um tutorial Hello, da dear diário. brothers and sisters. Welcome to one more tutorial of the daily food. This week we are seeing one more week, week three of book three. The invisible presence of Jesus. Hallelujah. For the word. More and more this week, we can have the invisible presence of Jesus. The Lord is always with us. The Lord wants to give us His presence to us. Every time we have His word, we have His presence. Let us enjoy the word together this week. And we'll be reviewing a little bit of what we saw in the last books in the series of the Daily Food. The first two books. And something quite important that the saints gave us this week. It is that we need to have a heart well defined regarding our mission. Our mission it is to build up the church. What we're doing on this earth, it is something very clear, and it is certain, which is to build up the church, the body of Christ. So our life, our living, it's not for other things, not to build something for this world. Uh, reminding us of that statue in Daniel chapter 2, we see all the kings of the world represented over there. Our life, it's not to build something on this earth. Our life, it's not to build the kingdoms of this world, but for the kingdom of God, for the building of the up of the body of Christ, for the Lord to return, for God's kingdom to fill all the earth. For that, it is necessary the church to be built up. And all of the spiritual blessings we saw in Ephesians chapters 1 and 2 show us how much the Lord wants to work in us, how much we are inserted in His plan. From Monday through Wednesday, this week in the Daily Food, we have a review of these spiritual blessings. In Ephesians 1, 3, we see the blast of the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Hallelujah! All of these blessings are for us. All of these blessings are for each one of us. We can we can experience them. We can live them. They are to change our life and our person to all of us. God prepared His grace as a river to get to all of us. Praise the Lord for that. And in Ephesians 1, 23, we have the result of the, these blessings. His body, uh, when he speaks of the body of Christ, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So Christ filling all things, not leaving any empty space without his government. It is the result of the dispensing of these blessings. We received his blessings. The more we receive it, the more the Lord will build his church, the more he will conquer his fullness for him to return. Hallelujah. And we also saw in these first days of the week what is making us to see what in fact can be a hindrance for us to see all this revelation the Lord is giving us. And then we are taken to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. These are wonderful verses. I personally really enjoy these verses, beginning with verse 7. Here we read, verse 6, the Apostle Paul says, However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Hallelujah! The Lord is revealing to us the way of glory to us. Each one of those messages, each word that we are hearing every week in the daily food, this is getting 
clear to us more and more. The Lord, with the dispensing of His blessings, each of His blessings to us through His grace, is leading us to glory. It's not just a blessing to, to do well to us. It's not just a blessing to change our lives. It's way more than that. This blessing was preordained from the old time, from eternity, for our glory, to lead us to glory. This is wonderful. And this wisdom, it is wisdom that no man on this earth had known, for which none of the rulers of this age knew, for they had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They may be smart, but they cannot press on God's matters. Continuing here, it is because I has not seen or ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Hallelujah. In our hearts, it's penetrating things that eyes have not seen. Uh, human heart never had those things penetrated. Oh, praise God. Everything that we are hearing, we are receiving, are heavenly things, right? Eyes have not seen, have not seen or ear heard, or have entered into the heart of man the thing that we are receiving. In verse 10, we see how we receive it. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Hallelujah. The Lord is revealing to us through the Spirit. The condition for us to receive revelation it is to be in the Spirit. He continues, For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God that we might know the thing that we have been freely given to us by God. Hallelujah. The Lord is revealing to us through His Spirit in us. Someone who does not have the Spirit of God, it's not just someone who did not believe, the one who did not live in the Spirit, the one who did not use His Spirit. He also obtains no revelations, like someone who has, has not, do not have the Spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, let us not be like the unbelievers who do not have the Spirit of God in them. We do have the Spirit of God within us, so we need to use our Spirit. We need to be those who touch the Spirit, and by the Spirit we receive the revelation of God. This is the condition that we need to be in Spirit to receive God's revelation. And in verse 13 we read, These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Dear brothers and sisters, everything that we have received in the Word in these last times have been higher and higher revelation coming from the Spirit of God, this is accessible to everyone who has the Spirit of God. You believe in the Lord Jesus, you have the Spirit of God in you, if you are someone who exercises your Spirit with the Spirit of God in you, you'll be receiving revelation. The revelation makes us to practice the Word. The practice of the Word makes us to experience heavenly things. All of this, the revelation of the Word, the practice of the revelation, are things that are not in the natural field. They are not in the natural elements. We need to be in spirit. The natural man, with the human natural concept, the human mind, the fallen mind, by only touching these physical world, 
this Cartesian world, as we saw in many past messages, cannot touch the things of God. For someone who is not in the Spirit, the things of God are crazy. For someone who does not live in his Spirit, the things of, of God do not match his logics. We are reminded this week, First Kings 18, when Elijah was with the prophets of Baal, Elijah prayed, and he received from the Lord that he should pour water on the sacrifice, burn it up, burn up with fire coming down from heaven. This is nothing logical. Something from heaven will come to set fire on the sacrifice. How come you do that? Not only that, much water to dig a hole around the altar and to fill it with water. This is totally outside of the logic, but this is the way of God. That is why I have to be in spirit. I have to use our faith to believe in the word, the word of the Lord. This makes us to live in the spirit. This makes us to live in newness of life. We we'll see in Romans 6, 4, to live in newness of life and to serve in newness of spirit. Romans 7, 6, there we see that we can live and serve in the newness of the Spirit and not in the oldness of the latter. Let us not be old, just holding on to that knowledge. This is to use the things of God, to touch the things of God with human wisdom. We need the wisdom from above, from the Spirit, okay? O saints, from Thursday to the first part of Saturday this week, we then saw a review of the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, these heavenly blessings, which is the grace of God for us. Grace came to us and blessed us. The Father chose us in Him before the foundation of the world. The Father chose us, predestined us, Praise the Lord. All of these blessings fill us with might and energy because we were chosen. We were predestined. We have a right destination, which is the glory of the Father. Before the foundation of the world, God had chosen us and gave us a right destination. He's leading us to glory today. Saints, what a great encouragement for us to live in our day-to-day, -day, preaching the gospel, speaking that to people. The Lord chose them, the Lord chose them to be brought into God Himself, to be brought into His glory. We can, with confidence, to pray for people, because we have seen this revelation. We have received the glory of God. Brothers and sisters, when we touch on this blessing, we are encouraged to bless others. We are encouraged to bring others before the Lord. Hallelujah. The blessing of the Son, it is our redemption and headship in Christ for obedience. This is a great blessing the Lord gave us. And something that we saw in the daily food this week, it is that in Romans 5, we see the intensity of the action of God to save us. Romans 5, 20 and 21. Romans 5, 20. Uh, moreover, the law entered that offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Hallelujah. Grace superabounded, abounded much more. It doesn't matter what the human condition is or how much sin do you have, but the blessing of the Son brings us grace, the much more abounding grace of God to forgive our sins. Our Lord Jesus died on the cross, he shed his blood to justify us. It doesn't matter what our condition is. It doesn't matter where we fell. Grace comes to us. Hallelujah. This is wonderful. What the Lord prepared for us. Verse 21 so that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Grace reached us. The grace of God reached us as a river, at that river that we saw recently, the river that came out of the Garden of Eden to seek man who was lost. One of those four riverheads, as the Spirit went after us, bringing this grace to each one of us. How wonderful it is! We receive this blessing, experience this blessing. Through the Spirit, we can receive this revelation. We can enjoy it. We can be filled with energy and might of so great intensity of God in seeking us. Hallelujah. No matter what your condition is, no matter what the saint's condition is or in your church, doesn't matter what, a, what a the condition of those you know or you do not know, we can preach the gospel to them, for all of them. All of those who are condemned because of sin, we can say to them, where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. We can pray for them, pray with them, for them to be reconnected with God. Hallelujah, how wonderful. The Lord is also showing us His will, which is to head up on Christ all things. This is the second part of the blessing of the Son. The hardship, this hardship it is for obedience. There is nothing stronger than the will of God. Ephesians 1 verses 11 and 12 shows us that we were made uh, predestined according to the purpose of Him who works all things according to the counsel of His will. It is the will of God that brought the Son to redeem us. The, the Father chose us before the foundation of the world. All of that is in the will of God, the blessing of the Father, the Son, and of the Spirit. They are in the will of God. We are in the will of God. People on the streets, they are in the will of God. It's up to us to believe in the word the Lord is speaking to us, to be simple, obedient, to be headed up in Christ, to obey Him, and to preach the gospel to people, to care and shepherd the saints. All of that, it is within the will of God. The net of care, right? The Godspeed, young one. Everything the Lord is giving us, it is to make us to do the will of God. Finally, the blessing of the Spirit in verses 13 and 14. Him, in 12, we read that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of His glory. We will be to the praise of His glory. The glory of God has been worked in us through the, these blessings. Hallelujah. In Him you also trusted after you heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of His glory. Hallelujah. It is everything that is through faith. Faith, when we believed in the gospel of our salvation, we received this word, and by faith everything changed. Hallelujah. The key for the heavenly things, the key for these blessings in the heavenly places, it is in the faith. Hallelujah. Let us use our faith. Let us not use our mind so much. Our mind must be in the Spirit, subdued by the Spirit, so that by faith we may understand the things of God. By faith we have access to God's dimension. We have access to all of these blessings. Hallelujah. The seal shows that the Lord gained us, has us his own property. Now he can work in each one of us. We also have this guarantee that we will be God's inheritance and he will be our inheritance. We have this sample of what we'll have when the Lord returns. We have a sample of the fold that we'll be experiencing this is wonderful. This is the blessing of the Spirit. All of these blessings, dear brothers and sisters, are for us. We must believe in that. We must live this reality because all of that is for us. All of that was separated by the Lord for us. We have this these foretaste, the sample, what will be and join in eternity when the Lord returns and our bodies redeemed. 
will be entering the glory of the Father. Hallelujah. We'll be experiencing glorification. And then everything will be wonderful. We'll be filled with the glory that is unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. That is why today we can use our spirit. By the spirit we receive this revelation. By the spirit we can have access to these blessings. By the spirit this revelation will be our reality. Let us walk in spirit, live in the spirit. Jesus is Lord. Finally, on Saturday and Sunday, we see here on verse 15 and 16 in Ephesians 1. Therefore, I also after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Showing us the importance of prayer. Prayers to receive life so that the word to be a reality in our lives and in the lives of others. We need to pray for people and we need also to pray to the Lord for people. We will be preaching the gospel to them and praying for them. Hallelujah. This is wonderful. And that we also saw Ezekiel 37, the, this episode of the, the Valley of Dry Bones. God sent the prophet to prophesy. We are doing that on the streets. People are dead as dry bones. They are living in their flesh, but in their spirit, they are like dry bones without life. When we preach the gospel to them, the word begins to get to them. We pray to them, we pray to the Lord, we pray on the streets to them, we continue praying in the church meetings, we continue praying with other saints, in our uh, men's of prayer, in the connected women, we pray for people. What happens? Life will be brought forth in them, and a great army will be raised. Hallelujah! What the Lord? This is what the Lord is doing to us. This is what the Lord is doing in His church. God wants to use you and me to form His army. On the one hand, we are part of God's army, but God wants to use you and me to increase the rows in this army by preaching the gospel, praying for people. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. The Lord is leading us to pray for people. Finally, in verse 17 through 19, we read about the spirit of wisdom and revelation. We that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Hallelujah. All of that, all, all those words are for us to, for all God's power to exercise in Christ, raising him from the dead. All of these blessings, these heavenly blessings we have in chapter 1 is for us to reach the fullness. For God to head up all things in Christ and for him to fill up all things, for all of the blank spaces of authority and for him to be fullness of him who fills all things in all. God will fill all things when we, the church, are subject to Christ and are fully headed up in Him. What is the result? The result, it is the verse 22 and 23. Uh, he put all things under His feet and gave Him to be head over all things to the church, which is His body, the fullness of Him who fills all in all. The result that we receive revelation in the Spirit and we have the reality of these blessings coming to us, this grace of God coming to us and working in us. Hallelujah. The grace of God is working His glory in, in each one of us, or for each one of us, for all of us to be uh, taken up by the building up of the body of Christ. Dear brother and sister, may the Lord bless you, bless your family, May you enjoy the heavenly blessings. All of them are for you. For you and me, 
to have part in the building of the body of Christ. Jesus is Lord.